Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to The Weekly Option. This is episode 337 on August the 23rd, 2024. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, we'll cover the trades from last week on ChargePoint Holdings, Petrolio Brasileiro, and DraftKings, and we discuss three new trades on B. Riley Financial Inc., Match Group, and SoFi Technologies. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here on the show or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E R. I see at theweeklyoption.com. I've also created a few videos to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. Now, the markets finished the week higher with the Dow closing at a new weekly high. The Dow Jones Industrial Average grew 53 points ending the week at 40,712 points. The S&P 500 index gained 80 points, closing on Friday at 5,634 points. And now it's time for the topic of the week. The topic of the week is learning from losing. Now, I love winning. I do. I'm not even ashamed of that at all. Some people are gluttons for punishment. Some people love to share a sad song. I just want to win, but the truth of it is, I don't always win, and that sucks. Trading can be exhilarating. It can be incredibly humbling also, and my best lessons have come from the times when I lost. Sometimes the loss came because the strategy was flawed. Sometimes the strategy was on point, but the execution was off. Sometimes the trade was just mismanaged, which still led to a loss. The only way that I can win when I lose is that I learn something. It is important to learn from your losses. If you don't learn from losses, you'll repeat the mistake again. So how can you start learning from losing? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. First, figure out why you lost. Was it the strategy? If so, you need to change your strategy. Did you have the right strategy in mind but allowed emotion to lead to bad execution? This can happen when we think we know which way the markets are going to go even though none of our rules for trading were triggered. Using emotion will typically lead to poor execution. And in this scenario, you have to double down on trusting your strategy. Or did you follow the strategy but mismanage the trade once you were in it? In any of these scenarios, it's important to replay the trade. Now, I use TradingView for my charting software, and it allows me to replay an entire day minute by minute. I literally replay the day to reprogram myself to make a better trade, make better decisions. This is part of my practice. I also print out charts every weekend and look day by day at the signals that would have triggered a trade for me. I really hone in on days where I made a poor decision that led to a loss. But I also look at the wins as well and reinforce why they won. I share all of this as a reminder that you don't ever want to hide from a loss. Losses should be treasured because they actually lead to learning if you take the opportunity to practice. Get better. That's the goal here. It's not about your ego. It's about your success in your wallet. Trust me, I understand. I don't like losing, but my losses tend to lead to better wins. And on the topic of getting better, it's just about time to invite a new group into a three-month trading coaching program. If you're interested in starting to trade options or if you just like to get better at it, this is the program for you. So just shoot me an email, send me an email for more information and I'll send you a link so you can look at it and see if this might be right for you. We'll set up a phone call and have a conversation to decide if it makes sense or not for you in your specific situation. So that's it for the topic of the week. Let's go ahead and get into the trading review from last week's trades. Now, we'll start off with the covered call on ChargePoint Holdings, symbol C as in Charlie, H as in Hotel, P as in Papa, T as in Tango. At the time, the stock was trading for $1.78 per share. I looked at buying stock and selling the September 2 call at $0.14, 
hoping for a 20.22% return in five weeks. Well, shares of ChargePoint grew $0.14, ending the week at $1.92 per share. The call option that we sold gained $0.08, leaving us with a net gain of $0.06 if we were to close the trade out immediately. Now, this trade is definitely moving in the exact direction that we planned, so no adjustments are needed at this point. This trade will max out the planned return if the stock expires above $2 per share in four weeks. So we'll continue to monitor the trade in case an adjustment is needed in the coming weeks, but for now, so far, so good. Next up, we have the credit spread. We looked at Petróleo Brasileiro, otherwise known as Petro Brazil, symbol P as in Papa, B as in Bravo, R as in Romeo. At the time, the stock was trading for $15.16 per share. I looked at selling the September 15, 14 put spread at 32 cents, which could give us a maximum possible loss of 68 cents per spread. Well, shares of Petro Brazil fell 76 cents, closing the week at $14.40 per share. The out of the money put spread that we sold is now at the money, and we are 28 cents below our break even point. That means we're losing money on the spread at this point. Now, the trade had a maximum loss defined from the start. So without making a single adjustment, we know that the worst this trade can do is that maximum possible loss. We also have four weeks left. So time is actually on our side. We typically look to sell a call spread to make this an iron condor. And we can certainly do that, which will lower our overall maximum possible loss. But if the stock pops higher again, in the next few weeks, then we will lock in an overall loss. And I don't like that. So my first plan is to let the stock breathe a little bit and see if it's going to head a little bit higher. If not, I'll definitely look to create an iron condor if it makes sense with the prices of the call spreads. And if the stock does move significantly lower, I might even turn it into a long, like a debit spread instead of the credit spread that we started out with. So I just need to make sure that I do the math on any adjustment and don't create a scenario where you end up spending more to adjust the trade than you would have lost from the start, right? From the original trade. You've heard me say it before and I'm going to say it again. Always do the math. It has saved me from making bad decisions multiple times. So do the math before you make any adjustments on any trade ever, 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 ever. And then our final trade, um, we'll move on. Our final trade from last week is a debit spread. We looked at DraftKings, symbol D as in Delta, K as in Kilo, N as in November, G as in Golf. At the time, the stock was trading for $34.14 per share. I looked at buying the September 33, 34 call spread for $0.61. That could give us a maximum gain of $0.39, or that would be a 63.93% return in five weeks. Well, shares of DraftKings jumped $2.23, ending the week at $36.37 per share. The the in-the-money call spread that we bought is deep in the money at this point. And with stocks so high, there's really no reason to make an adjustment. The spread will move towards the intrinsic value over time as this stock stays well above our strikes. So this trade's working out. Continue to track it over the next few weeks in case the stock does fall and the spread ends up needing to be managed. But... Rather than sell the spread early, I could actually trade the box and lock in an 18 cent gain right now. And if you don't understand the box trade, well, you'll just have to email me and I can give you a quick lesson. And it's probably a sign that you might benefit from joining up into the uh, coaching program. But of course, our maximum gain is more than twice the amount of the box that we lock in. So it's worth waiting a few weeks until expiration. So overall, this is a nice trade. We could put on another trade that will lock in 18 cents or we'll wait the next four weeks. As long as stock stays above $34 per share, we'll be looking to lock in 39 cent, a 39 cent gain on this trade. So nice one. I love it when trades work and work out the way you want it. And this was a nice stock jump. Uh, as well. The options um, gave us a nice little indicator there. So either way, nice trade. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. So that's it for the review of last week's trades. Of course, uh, we are still looking at option trades using the monthly expiration date for September, which is September the 20th. 
So with that in mind, let's look at our next three trades. We're going to start off like we always do with a covered call. I haven't traded this company yet. It's B. Riley Financial Inc. Symbol R is in Romeo, I is in India, L is in Lima, Y is in Yankee. The stock ended the week at $6.21 per share. I looked at buying the stock and selling the September 6 half call at $0.85. Cents. That could give us a return of 18.36% in four weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying stock for $6.21 per share and selling the September 6 half call at $0.85. Cents. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $6.50 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $5.36 per share. In real terms, the stock purchase will require $621 and you'll collect $85 for selling the option. Next up, we have a credit spread. Looking at match group, symbol M as in Mike, T as in Tango, C as in Charlie, H as in Hotel. The stock ended the week at $37.32 per share. I'm looking at selling the September 37, 36 half put spread at 17 cents. That could give us a maximum possible loss of 33 cents per spread. Now you enter this trade by selling the September 37 put at 94 cents and concurrently buying the September 36 half put for 77 cents. This is a credit spread because we are selling the spread. And this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $37 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $36.83 per share. In real terms, you'll collect $17 per spread that you sell and have $33 at risk. And then our final trade on the week is going to be a debit spread. Looking at SoFi Technologies, Inc., symbol S is in Sierra, O is in Oscar, F is in Foxtrot, I is in India. The stock ended the week at $7.52 per share. I'm looking at buying the September 7, 7 half call spread for $0.33. Cents. That could give us a maximum gain of $0.17, cents, or that's a 51.52% return in four weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying the September 7 call for $0.70 cents and concurrently selling the September 7 half call at $0.37. Cents. This is a debit spread because we're buying the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices expire above $7.50 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $7.33 per share and in real terms, you'll pay $33 to enter the spread and your maximum gain is $17 per spread. So that's it for this week's show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for surviving the summer. You know, we're only a couple of weeks away from Labor Day weekend, which is great. We typically see volumes increase. So get ready because we're going to be trading one more month and then it's Q4. Can you believe this year is almost done? I don't want to speed it up in my mind, but yeah, we're two thirds of the way through this year. So get ready for the next uh, the next segment of the year, the next bit of trading that's going to come. There are some crazy opportunities in the market, so keep trading. Let me know if you have any questions, and certainly if you're up for learning, if you're up for upping your game trading, shoot me an email, and we can discuss whether or not my program is right for you. All right, have a wonderful weekend, and as always, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.